Okay, I'll pet you again, but then I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'll pet you again, but then I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'll pet you again, but then I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'll pet you again. Every time. Finally, I just have to get up and walk away when I'm done. Good morning, you guys. I totally called it yesterday. I felt myself getting sick. I drank emergency yesterday. I tried to do whatever I could to combat it hitting me like full force, but I woke up in the middle of the night to go pee because the new medicine I'm on is a diuretic, and so it makes you pee like no other. But I woke up to go pee again. Just felt really bad. It's really my throat. I'm super congested again. Like, I just don't know. This past, like, couple weeks, I've just been feeling kind of crappy. I went back to sleep, and then I woke up actually, like, just now this morning, and I just feel like total dog crap. Where are my glasses? I feel like the edges of my lips are way more chapped than normal, and I also can feel that my skin is starting to peel. I don't know why this camera is not wanting to show you like how much it's starting to flake and shed, but I posted a photo on Snapchat just now that I will go ahead and insert right here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna keep doing exactly what the doctor says. He told me this would happen and he said, you're gonna wanna quit, but don't. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna stick through it. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm being too complainy or anything. I just woke up and honestly, I feel like crap and this is, what I do in my day and this video is like how my day is going and this morning I woke up and all I want to do is complain to you guys. I took a body shower but I tried to keep my hair and face from getting wet because I wanted to show you the flaking and I don't know how it's going to look after I wash it and everything. Starting off with my oil cleanse and this is my face wash that I'm supposed to use morning and night. If this is only like, what is this, like day three that I'm on? all of this stuff. I don't know how bad it's going to get. Now I'm going to take my Zeo Skin Health OFX Exfoliating Polish. This is probably the most confusing step to me because he says he wants me to exfoliate my face with this every single morning, which is not what I've heard from other dermatologists. I've had so many people tell me like, don't over exfoliate your skin, but it might also be that he's just kind of trying to really give me a full refresh and make my skin like rejuvenate itself or something i honestly don't know and my next appointment with him i will ask him maybe i can film that appointment i don't know i'd have to like ask him beforehand and see if he's up for that he knows i'm doing this series so he's trying to get my skin as good as possible because he knows that you guys are going to see exactly what's happening and there's no like photoshop on my videos so you guys get the real tea but um, yeah, maybe we could like film an update or something. So there's definitely still a little shedding going on, um, but it looks way better than it did when I woke up. I feel like I'm kind of like wiping off dead skin, which is pretty gross. But the next step that I do, this has turned into like a morning skincare routine. These are the Sebatrol Oil Control Pads Maximum Strength, and you just take one of these bad boys and you rub both sides on your face. <gasps> oh my gosh, my eyes are watering. That was really painful. Oh my goodness, can you guys see? My eyes are like, like I don't wanna to touch my face again. You can do it, don't give up. Oh, this isn't supposed to be this painful, right? Oh, it stings as I keep applying it to my face. But he told me this would happen and he said, do not give up. So I'm not going to, I trust him. He is like medically certified to do this, but holy crap, that stung. It's never stung like that before. Mochi, it's fine. I just screamed because I hurt my face for a second. It's nothing. So the next step is my daily power defense. It says do two pumps of this. This is a serum. It's supposed to hydrate a little bit. Whoo, this burns too. Whoo! I feel like my face is crying, like not my eyes. Again, as I go back in and like do another step, I'm going to call him and just tell him that it's really painful. You can do it. So the next step is the Zio Skin Health uh, Oclips Sunscreen Plus Primer. I hate the bottle of this because you have to like 
spin it out like this and then when you try to pump it just like spins itself back in do you see that like am i doing this wrong what am i supposed to do with this so it is spf 30 i'm supposed to do two pumps but like i can't get a second pump out like break this top off are you kidding me so once you actually get the product out you can see it almost looks a little bit like foundation this is like my holy grail new item or skincare like product so this is a sunscreen but it has a tiny bit of tint it's probably because when people use these products their face gets so flipping red so it gives you a little bit of coverage but it is very pretty and I can see kind of like a smoothing effect and I'm definitely still shedding some. So I guess this is like my official skin update. I had my first side effect of peeling skin and burning and I'm gonna see what's up with that. It's still like dark in here. I haven't even turned on a light in like my bedroom this morning, but I changed into some fresh, clean PJs and now I'm sitting back in bed. I'm gonna upload the vlog from yesterday, go through and read all your comments. That is my favorite part of my entire day. So the boys are here with me. I took them on a little walk and can you guys hear that construction noise? That starts at 7 a.m. every morning and wakes Mochi up first and then Mochi wakes me up. And I don't know if that's legal to start construction in a residential area at 7 a.m. every single morning even on the weekends um, anyways yeah I'm still complaining I don't know what's wrong with me you guys I'm sorry I'm so scared that I'm gonna wear myself too thin today and then I'm going to be even more sick this weekend when I go to Toronto so I just want to have the best time possible this weekend so I'm gonna take it easy today I have a lot of work for the shop that I can do from my computer so I will definitely start working on that what are you chewing on why are you chewing on my blanket it. Does anyone else's dog nibble like this? Like he'll just take the edge of the blanket and just nibble on it for hours. It's so weird. I've had so many family dogs in my life and no one has ever nibbled the way Mochi does. What you doing? Then of course Teddy's down here like the king of the castle that he is. I can just imagine him being like, okay, so this is my bed. You're just sleeping in it. I don't have any soup here, so it is another cup of noodles day for me. I'm just gonna pour some of this hot water in there and close this. I also just drank another one of these emergencies, so I'm just gonna use that to like hold the lid down for a second. I spilled a little bit of water, but not too much. And this is gonna be my soup of the day. I'm actually embarrassed to tell you guys what time it is because I'm still in bed, but it's 4 p.m. Yep, and I'm still in bed. Watch this, my dog is trained so well. He knows like all these different tricks. Mochi, speak, speak. Oh my goodness, it looks like I have a mustache right now. Teddy, does your mom have a mustache? What are you doing? You're always, oh, did my breath scare you? I'm so sorry. Well, sometimes your farts scare me. Sorry to blast you out on the internet. You got some nasty farts, dude. The dogs are trying to get me to take them for a walk, I can tell, because they're like running around, Mochi's barking at me, Teddy's starting to whine, they're both like, it's time, it's time, and I'm just like, Ugh. this is the responsibility of being a parent. Okay, you guys, we need to talk. So I came downstairs and I'm sitting in front of my backdrop because I feel like this is a little bit better than me setting up my camera yesterday on my bed to do like our nighttime chit chat little talk segment and you guys could just see up my nose the entire time and it was kind of unflattering so i came down here it was all i could do just to waddle down my stairs i'm so sore from yesterday's workout and i have to talk to you guys because i don't even know what this video has turned into also i am wearing my all about that base but it's chuck bass sweatshirt every time i wear this in a video or on an instagram i get a lot of comments about it and people are like is that I'm all about that bass sweatshirt, like what is this? So yes, that is what I'm wearing. And I actually have a story time about Ed Westwick and me, which Ed Westwick, if you don't know, is the guy who plays Chuck Bass. 
I got a lot of comments when I was talking to Remy about going on a date with a celebrity and so many people were like, you have to do story time videos on like your celebrity encounters and who you've dated and like all this sort of stuff. Ed and I have never dated. I just wanna go ahead and throw that out there. Strictly platonic, but I do have a story about him. So I guess I'll tell you guys because the only thing I've done in this video so far is complain about not feeling well, complain about being sore, complain about my skin burning. And I do have an update on that because my dermatologist did give me a call back and told me what to do for that. But I'll tell you guys a super quick story time about our first awkward encounter. So I was invited to go to Vegas with a friend and she said, you're going to know some of the people. You're not going to know some of the people. I'm going to have you room with Kira, who you guys know from my videos. A lot of you have asked me if I'm still friends with Kira. Yes, she's still one of my dearest friends. My friend said, I'm going to put you and Kira in a room together. And then there are also going to be some people that you don't know that are coming. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I've met a lot of friends actually through this friend. So I was like, this is going to be great. So Kira and I went to the airport together. We met up with our other friend. So we meet up with her and then she has another group of people that are coming to meet up with us. And she's like, it's great. You'll get to meet each other on the plane like before we even get there. So I was like, cool, new friends. Well, in walks this group of guys, one of which is Mr. Chuck Bass himself. So he walks over with his friends. We're all introducing ourselves to each other. And I'm like, hey, I'm Blair. And he says, I'm Ed. And I say, I know. There's like this unspoken celebrity etiquette that apparently even if you know the person in LA it's not like cool to be the fan person you're supposed to be like oh hey like and you're so important and you're so cool that you don't like even care what they do because you're so cool too well I'm not that kind of person like when I'm starstruck and when I meet someone that is a celebrity and that I think is cool I'm the type of person that's like oh yeah I know exactly who you are I watch every single episode that was like the first kind of awkward thing a few people like give me weird looks and I'm sure everyone was thinking like great we have a fan girl on this trip with us when we thought we were just like gonna go to Vegas guess with some friends. I couldn't help it. We get on the plane. We're all together. We take some shots. It's super fun. We get to the hotel. We get our rooms. We start going separate ways to go like into our room. Ed and I like never part ways. So Kira and I are walking and Ed is continuing to walk and we're just like, okay. Anyways, turns out we have adjoining rooms. It's like a big old party. Of course, it's what you imagine. We open the doors for the adjoining rooms. We're excited. We're like, we have a suite, even though it's not a suite. It's just two rooms that are joined together. Mind you, our flight wasn't like early in the morning, but it was a good like early afternoon flight. And we had been drinking this entire time. And Ed and I really hadn't seen each other since like we first checked in and we were like, oh, we're sharing a room. Kira and I left and we did our own thing. We like went to the casino and we were drinking and all of this. So I had had quite a few drinks up to this point. It's time for everyone to meet up and go to dinner together. So Kira and I are changing in our room. Our other girlfriend comes and joins us. Somehow everyone decides just to come meet in our rooms because I guess we had adjoining rooms and everyone like knew where they were and they were like, okay, we're gonna meet in Blair and Ed's room. Everyone comes to our room and people are starting to introduce each other to people that they didn't meet either. They weren't on the flight or they didn't know each other from before or whatever. So there's a lot of introductions going around. I couldn't quite remember everyone I had met earlier because I'm not wonderful with faces. Of course I remember that I met Chuck Bass, but I didn't know like which of his friends I had met. So I was like, instead of singling out him being like, oh, I remember you, but I don't remember all of you. So I'm gonna introduce myself to everyone. I was like, I'll just reintroduce myself to everyone in the group. So here I go again, reintroducing myself to him. And what can I say that's even more embarrassing than like, oh yeah, I know who you are, which in my defense, I do not think is embarrassing, but apparently in LA, like celebrity culture, that's like a little bit taboo, which like, I didn't grow up here. I don't know that. I'm introducing myself to everyone I haven't met and I can't quite remember like who I'd met and who I hadn't, but I get to Ed and I'm like, hey, I'm Blair. And he's like, yeah, love, we met earlier. And I was like, oh yeah, you remember because like Chuck and Blair. And someone goes, yeah, and Blair's not even her real name. She picked it because of Blair Waldorf. That was a conversation that we then had. So maybe you guys don't think that's awkward, but I thought it was pretty awkward. And I do wanna make sure that I clarify in this story that that is not why my name is Blair and that is not why I named myself Blair. That is an entirely different discussion. I've talked about that on my channel so much. For anyone that's new to my channel and might not know, Blair is not my legal name, but it is what I go by in every sense of the way. It is my legal DBA doing business as. I 
I can write checks as Blair, I can cash checks as Blair, like it is legally my business name, but it's not my legal name, but my parents call me Blair. I don't even know if my little sister at this point knows my name isn't Blair because she was so young. But anyways, it was not because of Blair Waldorf. So I did not just decide to rename myself Blair, but it's kind of funny that that's what my friend decided to tell Chuck Bass when we met, but it ended up being an amazing weekend. We had such a good time. It wasn't awkward. Everyone was super cool after we got back. Ed was like, hey, I'm releasing this capsule collection for these sweatshirts, can I send you one? So that is where I got this sweatshirt. I don't think it is for sale anymore because this was years ago. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that awkward story at my expense. If you want any more story time videos where I actually like sit down and get ready and I'm not feeling sick and I actually like put more effort into the video and make it more interesting, would you want to see story times like that? Or should I just keep it in the vlog and just integrate it on day? when I don't have like a lot more going on. Let me know what you think. But the real reason that I wanted to talk to you guys before I got sidetracked by the face on my chest, I wanted to know what you guys want me to do on days like this. And I know I've asked you guys that so many times. You're probably like, I've already told you what I want you to do. Take it or leave it. But I just have gotten so many mixed not messages, but like mixed comments about what I should do on days when I don't really have anything interesting going on and there's not really a lot of like content worthy stuff. I'm literally just living my life and I might be in bed all day. I don't know, sometimes I do that because <gasps> I'm a human. So do you guys still wanna see videos on that day or do you think that I should keep it to where like you know when you click on a video on my channel, Mochi and Teddy are playing in the back. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Do you want it to be, you know that when you click on a video on my channel, you're gonna enjoy watching it? Or should I just upload like everything I film and then you guys can decide for yourself if you think it's like boring, you can just exit out of it. Because that is the great thing about YouTube. No one's like forcing you to watch anything that you don't wanna watch. So I just need like a definitive answer, like a yes or no. Do I upload mm -hmm. videos that might be boring? This is an example of one of those. A thumbs up means yes, just so you guys know, so we can hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to tap that subscribe button also if you have not already subscribed. And I've seen a lot of you tell me that you're turning on the notifications for my videos, which makes me so excited. And when I see comments that are like notification squad and all of that stuff, I get so excited. Dog jail. Mochi can't get him. I'm trying to film a very important segment of my video. Oh my gosh, Mochi's sitting the way he does when I'm about to give him a treat. And he's like looking up at me like, okay, I'm being a good boy, present me my present. That's embarrassing. I rambled so much my memory card ran out of space, but I have a new one in there, so we are ready to go. I wanted to update you guys on what Dr. Bashi said about my skin. He's my dermatologist, and he gave me a call back and he told me not to be using the Rafisa every single night. He wanted me to explain to him exactly what steps I'm doing and I told him that I was doing the Rafisa every single night and he was like, no, you should be doing it either every other night or even do it one night, take off three nights. Like he said, I could really do it as much as my skin can handle but not to overdo it. And I kind of remember him telling me that in the consultation if I'm being honest, but I am just like, an all or nothing steps kind of person. And I guess I just got home and I was like, oh, this says PM, I do it at night. And I kind of forgot that he told me that, but then as soon as he said that, I remembered he had said that. So I'm not going to use the Rafisa on my skin for the next couple nights and I'm just going to let this all sink in, but I am still gonna be using all of the other products that I have been prescribed and have been on my treatment plan. I'm going to try to answer today's question of the vlog as condensed as possible, but I could probably go on for like over an hour on this topic. So let me know if you want like a full video on this because I could absolutely make like a whole sit down video where I talk to you guys about this, but I've been asked when I kind of disappeared from YouTube, what was I doing with my life? There are so many reasons that went on behind the scenes that are kind of why I took a break from YouTube and why I left. So like I said, I can do a whole video if you guys want. So I have a lot to say about what's gone on with YouTube. Since I first started, I've been here for quite a while watching like who's rising and what's going on. And I know that there are a lot of 
powerhouses behind some of the big YouTubers, agents, managers, publicists, just everything. And I kind of fell down that rabbit hole when I first moved out here to LA. And I had so many different people telling me like what my channel should be and what was gonna make me the most fame and the most money and all this stuff. And I was young and influenced and I was like, absolutely, like I want that, I want the fame, I want the money. And I kind of just fell out of love of the hobby of YouTube and I just started looking to it as a job. At the beginning of this year when I broke my arm, I think that's really when I decided like I just, I mean I tried to hold on for so long but I just wasn't really enjoying videos. And I was like I'm just not gonna have this be my career anymore. Like I'm gonna find something else. So I was kind of finding myself. I was falling in love. I was falling down and breaking my arm. There was a lot of falling happening. I feel like I'm rambling again. There's so much to tell you about this topic but I've had a lot of people questioning like my motives for coming back and they're like why is she doing all of these videos all of a sudden? Like, what is she trying to accomplish? To be honest, I'm just really enjoying it. And I love sitting down and reading your comments to me. I love like all the other social media that goes with it. The Snapchat, that's my absolute fave. Add me, Miss Blair Fowler. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of different reasons and I should probably do like a full video on that. But I'm gonna go ahead and go because I still don't feel well. I have a major sore throat and I also kind of feel it in my chest a little bit. Like when I cough, I have one of those like deep, kind of like gross coughs. The question of the vlog is officially, where were you when you kind of disappeared from YouTube? My answer is falling. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up also if you want more story time videos and don't forget to tap that subscribe down below and hit the little notification bell if you wanna be notified whenever I upload a new video. And I will see you guys with my next vlog. Bye.